All right, as we continue on with the circulatory system notes here, diseases and disorders, common diseases that affect the circulatory system. All right. Heart disease. Okay, heart disease. What is heart disease? Since your heart is a muscle, it needs oxygen and nutrients. Okay, your heart is a big muscle that contracts and releases and contracts to pump that blood. In the same way that any other muscle needs oxygen and nutrients, so does your heart. Anything that interferes with your heart's ability to pump blood is considered a heart disease. Sometimes this is caused at the heart. Other times this is caused by something going wrong with the blood itself. Okay. So the physical heart, the pump itself, there could be uh, damage to uh, the, si the systems, the, um, the sections, the muscle, fluid in there, um, different things like that, electrical signals uh, not working properly. Or it could be the blood itself. So, Some common heart diseases include myocardial infarction. That's the same as a heart attack. So when someone, uh, if you know someone that has a heart attack, technically the, uh, the medical term for it is myocardial infarction. That is a blood flow to the heart is cut off. Angina is blood flow to the heart that is partially or fully blocked. So it's, it's like a, um, it's a symptom of a heart attack. It's like a, like a small heart attack. Um, it's not a full heart attack, but it's called angina. Uh, coronary artery disease, coronary artery disease, that's when the arteries to the heart are blocked. So the arteries that are, well, they're technically they're coming out of the heart, but the arteries that are connected to the heart um, are blocked. And arrhythmia, it's a funny spelling, but arrhythmia is an irregular heartbeat. Okay, so if we highlight these myocardial infarction, angina, coronary artery disease, arrhythmia. So you have to know what they are and what they, what they do. Also, when we're talking about these medical terms, you gotta work on the spelling too. So try and memorize the proper spelling. Um, there will be some, there will probably be some uh, marks off for, for misspelling these words because they are kind of tough. But I won't uh, give you full marks off if you misspell something while you're trying to communicate something to me. So um, the spelling is important. It's not everything. All right, next slide. Um, uh, arthros arthrosclerosis is a hardening of the artery walls. Arthrosclerosis. I'll make that a bit bigger. Hardening of the artery walls. Arthrosclerosis. Congestive heart failure. The heart is not strong enough to pump blood efficiently. The blood starts to back up. Yeah, that's not good. It goes the wrong way. Uh, hypertension. Okay, so remember, the, uh, remember what we've learned in this class is that it's important when you run across a word you don't know to split it up, right? So hyper means above or beyond or greater than, right? That's lots of tension, lots of tension. So that is high blood pressure, hypertension. And tension, another word for tension is pressure. So stroke is when a blood vessel gets blocked. Now there, there, are, there are also brain bleeds that I think are also considered a stroke, but technically a stroke is when blood vessels get blocked in the brain. You ever, do you guys know anything about stroke? You ever, do you know anybody that's had a stroke? Yeah. Yeah, question? How does that affect like, your brain getting blocked? So how you should be down now? Like, well, there's, there's lots of things that can happen. I mean, if it's severe enough, you die. Um, if, it's, if it's not severe, like it could destroy some tissue, uh, overflow of blood or whatever. It could destroy an area of the brain. So it could cause uh, an effect of your function or your memory or that kind of thing. So um, lots of times... Lots of times strokes um, affect certain aspects, like the left side of your body is often affected by a stroke. Um, and so there's, there's loss of sensation or movement. Lots of times the left side of the face and the left arm and leg are numb or droopy. So. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, the connection between the brain and the movement of the limb is, is, is damaged. And I think it's usually in the right side when that happens. And mo most of the bleeds are on the right side, I, I, I think. So that's a stroke. Um, an aneurysm is when a blood vessel wall weakens and it bulges outward. An aneurysm. And that would, I, th I think this would result in a breaking of the blood vessel as well, and that would be like a brain bleed, but technically aneurysm is a bulge. All right, blood disease. Anything that affects the cells of the blood or how they work is a blood disease or it's a disorder. So some common ones, anemia. When the red blood cells do not transport enough oxygen, anemia. Hemophilia, when the blood does not clot properly, so excessive bleeding happens. Leukemia is a cancer of the blood cells, specifically the leukocytes, so leukemia. Okay, any questions about those last couple slides? Yeah. Uh, something affects their voice? A stroke? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, it could, yeah. There's, there's part of your, so could a stroke affect your voice? A stroke, stroke affects physical aspects of your body lots of times on the left side, not always, but lots of times on the left side. And so, yeah, I don't know exactly what it would affect, but sometimes because muscles and function on the left side of the head and throat and chest cavity, could affect how you sound, yeah, how you pronounce your words. Is it? Mm. Yeah, right, right. So you could also you know, mumble a, a little bit more, or, you're, or you're, it's just tougher for you to like. Like I'm not trying to be disrespectful, but as an as an example, if, if you can't you know move one side of your face, you can only move, you know, one side of your face. It's it's kind of tough to to possibly to form words, right? Like I mean, you think about. You move your whole mouth, your tongue, your, your cheeks, your jaw, everything. You move those a lot when you form words. So if you all of a sudden can't move your mouth, it's a little tougher to form words. Yeah. So uh, the voice, especially the, the quality and the tone of the voice could change a little bit because the muscles aren't moving as much. But um, yeah, it would, it would, those effects would vary. All right, 4.4, uh, diagnosis. OK, some common diagnostics for the circulatory system. Let's see. There are a couple of ways to diagnose heart conditions. A stethoscope. Remember, we learned about the stethoscope in the history of healthcare. This means we listen to the heartbeat to see if it sounds correct. Okay. And again, there's that thump, 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 thump. It kind of like gives a little bit of like a trot, right? Um, there, there's more to it as well. There's more than just that, but doctors know what they're what they're listening for. Uh, an electrocardiogram, an electrocardiogram. This is a recording of the electrical activity of the heart, and I believe it's, I don't think it's on here, but I believe that's the e ECG, electrocardiogram. That could come up later, I'm not sure. It's an EKG. Why is the EKG almost no Like, which the next? Oh, it's on the next slide, yeah, yeah. I think ECG, EKG, or I think they're the same thing. Uh, I think they're the same thing. Uh, symptoms, okay, symptoms, there are certain symptoms that we look for with heart conditions, okay, so, and we'll talk a little bit more about those. Uh, for blood conditions, we diagnose them by analyzing the blood, and we typically do this as a result of some symptom being present. So when you go get blood work done, if the doctor has some reason to think that you might have some complications with your heart or in the circulatory system, they'll often get your blood checked, okay? Okay, so ECG, EKG, that is the next slide here, the electrocardiogram. There are many kinds of EKG or ECG, depends who you talk to. Uh, again, it's a, it's a global, you know, this, is, this is, the whole world is involved here. The whole world has different, um, different ways of spelling things, right? Different languages involved, so sometimes these letters are a little bit different. 
So many kinds of EKG, but the most common is an anterior 12 lead EKG. This means that they're recording electrical signal with 12 electronic patches. Okay, so is anybody um, willing to share that you've had that done for? I mean, I have. But they stick all this, all this yeah. stuff all over your chest and stuff and here and there. And, and then they just turn the machine on and you just kind of sit there and, uh, you know, you can kind of see your, your heartbeat on the screen. And it records it. And then the doctor looks at all those little waves, which, uh, which either in this class or in, a, in another class you might, uh, we might explore an EKG a little bit further, okay? But... All right, um, let's, let's talk about the different aspects of an ECG or an EKG. Boys, boys, do you have a question? Um, I was just asking him if he's been during the class. Okay, okay, we're moving on here now, so you can talk later about that. Uh, the P wave, this is the beating of the atriums, okay, electrical depolarization. So the P wave. The QRS complex, this is the beating of the ventricles. So the P wave is atriums, QRS complex is the ventricles. The T wave, this is the resetting of the ventricles electrically. The T wave, resetting of the ventricles. Okay, and I think you have this, I think you have this in your notes, don't you? Yeah, it's on, okay, yeah, so it's it's not, yeah, it's actually in with the uh, heart disease page, isn't it? Yeah, okay, so that should be on the, that's on the wrong page. If you look back a page, you'll see this diagram. Hopefully I'll have these notes fixed soon, but anyways, this is the diagram that follows here, the EKG, ECG. Okay, so where are we looking? So now, you've all seen either on TV or maybe in a hospital room that you've been in, you see this uh, machine, right, and it, and it kind of has the... <laughs> Right? That's measuring the heartbeat of the patient. And so these are the, the sections or the waves that we're talking about. The P wave is this little this little one right here. Now the P wave, what was the P wave again? Shout it out, what did it say? It's the atrium. Okay, the beating of the atrium, the contraction of the atrium. Okay. Um, the so the Q T terminal, let's just let me go back here again here. So the QRS complex, okay, so the QRS complex is this, I think it's basically this, this big part here. And what is that one? That's the? The beating of the? Ventricle. Of the what? The ventricle. Of the ventricle. Okay, does that, make, does that make sense that that's the biggest, the biggest slash in there? What is it about the ventricle? What does the ventricle do? Push the blood outside. Okay, so is the ventricle the one that pushes the blood to the rest of the body? Is that right? No. Oh. No? Not exactly. Like both ventricles push the blood somewhere. One of them just pushes yeah. them to the lungs and the other one pushes it to Okay, so which one? Both. Okay, okay, okay. All right, okay. So, okay, well, let's do a little bit more um, exploring. The T wave here, okay, this is like a resetting of the, it says resetting of the electricals, or uh, uh, ventricles electrically. So they kind of have to like reset to uh, kind of their original position to contract again. Okay, now the QT terminal, I don't think we have that exactly in our notes here. No. QT interval, okay. So the beginning from point Q to the end here, point T, that's, that's uh, something else that's um, examined there as well. Okay. So P wave, the QRS complex here is this big, the big wave there. And then the T wave is the resetting. Those are the three parts. One, two, three. Those are the three main parts. Okay. Question? All right. Uh, when doctors analyze an EKG or an ECG, they look for the following. Can all components be identified in each beat? Okay. So do we see all of these? Can they be identified? Are all components identified? Are the intervals between each component and each complex consistent? Uh, intervals between each component and complex. So is it an irregular heartbeat, like bump, bump, and then a big space, bump, 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 or is it consistent? Are there clear abnormalities of any of the wave components? Okay. So again, we're just we're just doing a really brief introduction here. We're not going to um, get too too far into this. That'll be for you know biology and uh, further studies. But um, those important parts, the little the little P wave there at the beginning, the big QRS complex, and then the T wave. That's kind of the three main parts that they 
that uh, medical professionals look for. Um, how do you remember seeing some of this in your CK12 work? Remember, remember learning about some of this? Okay. All right. All right, signs of a stroke um, to watch for can be remembered using the acronym FAST. You might have heard of this. FAST. So F is face. Is one side drooping? Usually one side. Well, droop, as I mentioned before, usually it's the left side. Arm. A is arm. Do they have any arm weakness or immobility? Okay, so a lot of times, left sides, a lot of times the arm will be like, I can't move my arm. Speech, okay, is there speech slurred? Okay, so speech, is there any slurring in the speech? And time, T is time. So you don't have a lot of time if you notice the symptoms of a stroke, you should call 911 immediately. Um, yeah, the, the effects can be uh, quite a bit more severe if more time goes by. Okay. So you want to call right away and you want to get somebody looked at right away. All right, uh, heart attack. Let's talk a little bit more about that. Myocardial infarction is the medical term. We look for symptoms, chest pain or discomfort. Okay, A lot of times when people are having heart attacks, they think it's really bad heartburn. It's like, ooh, I got a heart, really bad heartburn. And they usually kind of like grasp their left side or whatever. So sometimes it's like heartburn. Feeling weak or dizzy. Feeling weak or dizzy. Oh, I just got a sliver. Um, pain or discomfort in the jaw or in the neck or back, arm or shoulders. So any, anywhere kind of in this upper area here um, can also be a, a sign of a heart attack. Shortness of breath or nausea, throwing up, that kind of thing. So certainly if you have a combination of these symptoms, um, that's something very serious you should take a serious look at. Now let's just see what's going on here. So, so watch this guys, um, the coronary artery, okay, if there's a blockage and uh, blood is not able to flow, then, then you could have a, a heart attack, right? And you'll hear of people that have like a scare or maybe a minor heart attack that's, that's not really, doesn't really have any long-term uh, effect. Uh, and you may hear that some people go in for regular tests. Have you ever heard of a stress test before? Okay. So a stress test is where they, they get the person to work out really hard and they kind of see how their heart is behaving and how the blood flow is and they do all this testing. And so a lot of times they discover blockages before a heart attack uh, occurs. And um, uh, have you ever heard about like a heart uh, bypass, like a, a bypass, heart surgery? So if they discover that some of the uh, arteries are blocked and the person could be very near to a heart attack, could be very close. So they, a lot of times what they'll do is they'll try and clean out the arteries, put in a stent. Have you ever heard of a stent? Again, I, we may talk about, more about this later, but if there's artery that's collapsed or, or, or um, you know, filled with, filled with plaque or other garbage, cholesterol, that kind of thing, they may actually put like a little circular, it's almost like a balloon, they, they blow up the artery and then they put this little tube in there and then when it, when they release the, let the artery back down, it kind of has this tube inside, so it keeps the artery kind of open and clear. Anyways, um, yeah. Any other questions? Okay, so that's that. Guy doesn't look too happy. All right. All right, treatment. So what do we do? What are some treatments? Uh, medication. Okay, so... Um, there are blood thinners that people take to make, to make it so the blood does not clot as easily. This helps prevent clots from happening and may be useful if there's a risk of clots forming. So if the arteries are partially clogged or if there's small arteries or uh, if something is noticed that, hey, we could have a blockage or a stroke or a heart attack, people may be on blood thinners to make their blood a little less uh, jelly-like, a little, little more liquidy so that it, it doesn't clog as easily. Nitroglycerin uh, used to help regulate the heartbeat. A lot of times if a person that is in risk for a heart attack of some sort, if they feel something coming on, they'll, they'll often carry nitroglycerin with them and they'll, they'll take a shot of it or if it's a pill or a, a shot or whatever. Um, and anyways, it kind of it, it, it helps kind of uh, 
keeps the heart uh, regular beat. Uh, iron supplements, also to help with low iron, anemia. Uh, so there's these are the kind of medications that often people that are at risk of heart disease use. Questions? All right, what else? Lifestyle. Healthy diet and a good balance of low-fat foods, lots of vegetables and fruits. The goal is to lower cholesterol. So cholesterol builds up into your, your arteries and stuff. That's what creates blockages. So good diet, lots of fruits and vegetables, low fats. Exercise helps strengthens the heart. When you exercise, you're, you breathe heavy, your heart beats uh, more uh, faster, and uh, that helps strengthen your heart. Um, also, sorry. If your heart beats faster, you uh, No, if your heart beats faster, that means your your heart is getting exercise and it's it's working more. So it's it's just like if you want to be in better shape, you go for a run or you exercise. It, it exercises your muscles, gets them working a little bit more, more blood flow, more all that sort of stuff. So exercise helps strengthen your heart. But your heart should be as low as possible when you're normal. Your heart bump, like, very low. That's, yeah, yeah. That's if you the heart. at at rest when you're not working out, if you have a lower heartbeat, that generally means your heart is in better shape. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Generally, and not well, always, one but. Of my friends has 30. Yeah, thirty something. Yeah, yeah. Like um, uh, like marathon runners yeah, and things like this, low. they have very low in the 30s beats per minute. Most of us have 60, 70, 80, something like that at rest. So the lower, if your heart is really, really in good, good shape, it doesn't have to work very hard to pump it. It's like a, it's like a high horsepower machine. It just pumps and it doesn't have to work very hard. But if you're not, if you're, you're not in good shape, your heart's just a given or something. And it's just like, so sometimes your heart beats. You like that? Maintain your life while it's only bounce three times, yeah. like 70 times, then it can just bounce to 50 and you can go very fast. Yes, yeah. If your heart needs to bounce 50 to keep you alive, then it needs to go further. That's right, that's right. All right, surgery. If a vessel is blocked, surgeons can insert a stent. I talked about that a few minutes ago. Basically, a small mesh that reinforces the blood vessel's walls and help hold it open. So it's kind of like a mesh tube that they slide inside there. Surgeons can also replace valves inside the heart. This is done with either an animal valve, a pig, a cow, a horse, or a seal, or a human valve, or a mechanical one. So obviously that's very uh, serious surgery there. Yeah. Surgeons can also bypass parts of the blocked coronary arteries by attaching blood vessels that go around the blockage. So a double bypass, triple bypass, okay? Um, those are how many places do you have to bypass blocked arteries, um, and uh, that, that happens as well. There are also complete heart transplants that can be done. Some people have such bad heart disease and so many things wrong that they're waiting for a heart transplant. That's really the only thing that will help them. Um, and so people that donate organs after they're, they're dead, if they, if they uh, die, but they die suddenly or quickly and their organs are still in good shape, they, um, they test for if they're a match for someone that's needing a transplant. And then, um, yeah, that's that's how transplants happen. Do you know how they do the heart transplant? How they do the heart transplant? Well, it's removed from the the deceased person's body, and it's you know kept cool and cold and uh, as much as possible. It's it's flown um, or gotten to the the patient as quickly as possible, and then they remove. They remove the diseased heart from the person while machines keep the person alive and the blood pumping and oxygen and everything. So it's it's kind of a temporary sort of person is kept alive uh, through mechanical machines and that sort of stuff. And then they get the heart in there and hooked up. And then I, I don't I mean I'm not a heart surgeon, so I don't know exactly the process, but but basically in that in intermediate time, yeah, there's machines that are keeping the person alive. Yeah, that yeah, would be very difficult. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. That your is it possible that your heart can pump too much blood? That your body can't take it. Well, I uh, I don't know if I mean it, there is a possibility that your heart rate could be so high that it's not good for the rest of your body. There could be bursting. Your your vessels could burst. I suppose. But also all the blood that is 
no. is the same blood just being recycled, so it's not making more of a chemical. Yeah, no. it's just moving the blood. But I think the question was, can it go through too fast or too with yeah. too much like pressure? Well, yeah, it'd be like, yeah. Like, yeah, it's possible. It's possible. Okay, let's keep moving on. Good questions. All right, last. I think this is the last section. Careers. What are some common professions that deal with this system? There are many careers that are related specifically to the circulatory system. These jobs are just some of the main ones that we're going to list. Jobs to do with the heart usually contain the root word cardi or cardio. So a cardiac surgeon, a cardiologist, cardiovascular technologist, echocardiographer, echocardiographic technician, thoracic surgeon, they may also operate on the lungs, trachea, esophagus. Um, internists focus on the internal organs and the diseases that affect them. So cardio, um, the, th the, the thoracic surgeon is sort of, um, yeah, this is kind of this, this whole mid area there. And internal organs, internists. Yeah, cardio, cardi, cardio is the root word for those. So. And some of those, uh, you can do the EKG, you can, you know, I'll read all that. If you're a technologist, you work in the lab or you work with the machines themselves and with the, with the patients. Sorry? There are also careers that focus on the blood. Hematologist, perfusionist, phlebo phlebotomist. Finally, there are also lots of diagnostic technology involved as well. And again, you guys can look each one of these up, but we're not going to talk specifically about them right now. Maybe you've seen them in your CK12 work. Did you, did you see some of this? No, did you hear any of these? Okay. Uh, yeah, just to, just a, yeah, the CK12, you're going to have a lot of the same stuff, but there's going to be a, a little bit of extra uh, material that'll help round out your, your information there. So good to make sure you, make sure you get through all those CK12s, guys. Uh, medical laboratory technologist and technician, radiology technologist, electro, electrocardiographic technician, electrocardiographer. Did we not say those ones already? We didn't have those in the last slide? Electrocardiographer. Yeah. Yeah, that was mentioned twice, I guess. Or echo, electro, echo. Was it echo? So, yeah, I'm going back. So, echocardiography, yeah. 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 Yes, they're they're in both, yeah, the heart related and the blood related. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Is that uh, is that the end of your notes there? No. Got one more conclusions. Okay. Stay with me for two more minutes. Do you guys have any more notes on this or no? No. Okay. What is heart disease? Since your heart is a muscle, it needs oxygen and nutrients. In the same way that any other muscle, any other muscle needs oxygen and nutrients. Yeah, this is just kind of a refresh. Anything that interferes with your heart's ability to pump blood is considered a heart disease. Um, yeah, so just to make sure you, uh, uh, those are two main things to remember. Okay, and that's the end of the notes and the end of the slides as well. Okay, any questions at all about any any part of the PowerPoint? Okay, so there are two videos on MrMathwell.com. You can watch the first half and the second half if you need to look over anything. Um, they'll be up there. Also, you have CK12s and the blood one to work on. Uh, you get to the end of Sunday to do that. All right.